In 2011, there were four major stage collapses at outdoor concerts throughout the world. In many cases, not only were there thousands of people in the crowd, but there were also band members playing on stage. You know, they did have, they, they had a line coming off here at 45, they had a line coming off here at 45, those were well and good, um, but uh, the initial set of this stage, if you look at some of the earlier acts and entertainers, this this was pretty much all that was up there, you know, and then the entertainers down here, they really didn't have um, a lot of stuff on top, okay, and they didn't have any uh, curtains and stuff, and the, so there really was no threat to the thing collapsing, it was when you, when you bring in all these curtains, and then you bring that storm in, you know, that's when you're asking for trouble. So I hope this helps prevent any future uh, accidents with stage collapse problems. And we've been having way too many of these. You know, Belgium just had one cheap trick one month before uh, this happened. And uh, there were some others I've found on YouTube as well. And let's see if we can't, uh, you know, put an end to these, these problems. So who are the stakeholders? The concert goers, the stage builders, the bands, the venue, all have a stake in what happens at a concert. Risk management is important in all lines of business, but through the aforementioned cases, we realize how imperative risk management is in the business of producing concerts. 
I'm going to focus on the venue and stage builders. I mentioned before that the more unpredictable the weather in an area of the world, the more likely a stage collapsing or any structure collapsing would be. Did the stage builders consider these types of correlated risk when building stages in various parts of the world? Or were they all built to the same standards? These were heavy and daunting examples of complex risk. Who would expect or plan for four stage collapses due to weather phenomena in one year? The more unpredictable the weather is in an area of the world, the more likely a stage collapsing or any other structure collapsing would be to occur. So what risks were under the stage builders and venues control? The stage builders could have ensured that in all high risk areas, or just all stages in general, were built to a standard that considered high winds and heavy rains. Some of the venues had thunderstorm warnings and concerts could have been canceled or had better evacuation procedures in place. The weather is a risk that's not under anyone's control. However, information related to the weather is, as well as building stages and other buildings up to code. How people react is not under anyone's control either, but having a proper evacuation plan in place is. An ERM approach could have saved lives and money in all of these cases. For example, if the Indiana State Fair Commission had implemented better enterprise risk management with a proper disaster plan in place detailing evacuation procedures, lives could have been saved and less injuries would have occurred. There would have been less or no lawsuits that cost millions of dollars to stage builders and venues. Amy Parks, and I'm the Executive Administrator for Good Samaritan United Methodist Church, Good Samaritan Academy, and Good Sam Arts. What we're doing to implement ERM right now is we have a disaster plan that we're looking at. We're looking at our emergency evacuation procedures, we're looking at having a backup location, as well as a place to meet should any phenomena happen, such as a natural disaster or threat. There are many ways that all organizations can implement ERN. Hi everyone, my name is Ben Penninger, and you'll remember from the class introduction videos that I work for a YMCA outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. One of the biggest risks that we're vulnerable to are liability risks from the children in our programs and the families, as well as adults in our fitness programs. Behind me is one of our biggest assets as a YMCA, but also one of our biggest risk elements. Just next week, we're gonna serve around 500 children each and every day in our summer camp programs. It's not uncommon for us to have over 100 kids on this lake at any given time, some of them about a mile away from this facility. And thinking about how to manage that risk and thinking about some of the stage collapse uh, articles that we read in class and how conditions can change quickly, we realized that we needed a consistent and quick way to communicate with all of our staff throughout this complex, some of them on the lake. So we adopted an enterprise risk management approach, uh, coordinating with multiple departments between our IT department, our human resources department, and our risk management department. To seamlessly integrate with all of our operations, we adopted a system called Punch Alert. Punch Alert is an app that allows us to push information out and receive information in real time that everyone can see at once. So if we need to bring children in off the lake in an immediate fashion because weather is heading our way, or if we need to communicate any type of major emergency, we can all do so from something we carry each and every day in a phone. Uh, it's been a very valuable tool for us. Uh, we look forward to using it again this summer and it's a better way to help us manage risk and keep kids safe. We've been involved throughout the organization. We may have been able to mitigate some of the risks that we were exposed to on this issue. Working in the hospital environment. Um, for obvious reasons, the hospital can be a pretty stressful place to be and unfortunately risk events happen on a regular basis. So therefore we have a great corporate risk management team that works very closely with uh, the nurses and all the team members at the bedside as well as at the corporate level. They meet regularly with the corporate team and have a risk management plan in place for emergency situations um, on a great scale. And then on the day-to-day -day basis, we have risk managers that are very visible on the floor. And we have a risk management program that's all online that team members and patients have access to that if they feel that they're in a risk event that they can go on and and make that known. So if that happens, then we have risk managers that get with the managers of the floor or wherever the, the supervisors where that event occurred and 
we get to the bottom of any situation that occurs and involve several parties most of the time to ensure that uh, all aspects are covered and to reduce the risk and make sure that our patients are safe as well as our team members. Because as I said, the hospital can be a pretty risky place and therefore enterprise risk management is extremely important and one that's holistic and collaborative is even more important because it's such a large organization as well as such in-depth risk that we take part in every single day because of the healthcare business that we're in. So therefore, I do think that the hospital that I work in at Orlando Health is very proactive and takes a very great collaborative approach to enterprise risk management. Hello, I am Tony Stymack, and I'm an active duty officer in the Marine Corps. Right now, I'm assigned to a recruiting command, and my next topics will cover some of the risks involved in that line of work. Something similar that's been done in the past is called the inflatable obstacle course. Now, these are really big right now with the uh, inflatable 5Ks going about, but the Marine Corps actually did do something like this before. No one was really tracking on the experiences and lessons learned from those. It took one individual that was around in the command at the time these were going through the field to make the actual determination that it was not feasible to continue with this type of stuff. In 2002 to 2005, we had this stop our blow up obstacle courses. There was over $370,000 in claims in one year alone on one coast against the Marine Corps. As we know, these damages are very long lasting, especially the ones where there is medical recuperation involved. So coming back to this MET activation, that essentially ceased everyone from wanting to pursue this, even though it looked like a great idea. So in following up with this, some of the exposures that we did not accurately portray and accurately analyze pertain to the implementation of any sort of risk management program that we had. There was none in place. There was lessons learned, but they were scattered. They were siloed, essentially siloed, because time had passed. It had been over 10 years since the last time we attempted anything, and there was groupthink involved. Everyone was on board. We were already planning the actual visitation schedule and campus tour sites for FY17. Now, internally, we did not have a good program. We did not have a program that could function on its own with transitioning in personnel. Externally, we also did not look at the fact, and looking from the outside, it did not look at the fact that this was a proposal by our, by our advertising agency, our national advertising agency. We'd like to think they are looking out for our best interests as a Marine Corps, but if anyone who is involved with advertising knows that you want to keep your client and the projects that they get approved on generate more income for them due to the simple fact that time of staff and labor and the commissions involved increase the, the cash inflows. So much like the, the stages um, that were that collapsed at the musical performances in some of our cases, we did not look at the actual execution and who was doing the execution in that regard if we were to do something similar with these structures. Now, Find out how you can implement ERN in your organization to protect your most valuable and precious assets.